Congratulations on completing the previous task and on writing a code to simulate the 1D random walk that has the transition graph shown at the top of this slide. The code that you will have just written will have looked something like this once it's translated into Python. In this code, the variable x tells us the position of our walker and is thus initially set equal to 5. We then have a for loop that ensures that the indented code which generates each of our random moves is repeated multiple times. As you can see, this code that generates the moves makes the decision on whether to move forward or backwards by generating a Bernoulli random variable. The walker that we simulated in the previous task can move to any integer value along the real axis, as long as it is given sufficient time. There are thus an infinite number of states in this Markov chain. For this next task, I would like to simulate a similar Markov chain but I want this new chain to instead have a finite number of states. To make the chain finite, we are thus going to have to introduce some boundary conditions. In particular, we are going to introduce the absorbing boundary conditions shown on the graph at the top of this slide. This will mean that we will stop simulating our chain only once we reach one of the two absorbing states in the chain, as shown here. Let's think about what our computer program is going to have to do in order to simulate this chain. We are going to have to start to not start in one of the two observing, absorbing states first of all. We will thus need to start in either state 1, 2 or 3 if we are simulating the Markov chain with the transition graph shown at the top of this star line. Once we have picked a suitable state in which to start, we will then generate moves in the usual way. After each move, we are going to have to check if we have arrived in one of the two absorbing states. If we have arrived in an absorbing state, i.e. state 0 or state 4 in the graph, our code will stop as the program will be finished. If we have not arrived in an absorbing state, however, we will need to generate a new move and to repeat this whole process shown in the flowchart again. The aim of the next task is to write code to do this and to determine two things. First of all, whether the state we absorb into is state 0 or state 4. And secondly, the number of moves we generated in order to move from our initial state to the final state that the walker was absorbed into. The next tasks ask you to write a program to generate these two quantities and to plot these two quantities on a graph. Good luck.